Okay, so let's jump right into it. Today we're talking about Mike Waltz and uh, potentially a really big move for him, maybe becoming the National Security Advisor. Yeah, definitely a unique path. You know, going from congressman to a position advising the president directly. For sure, it's a position with so much impact. I think the first thing that jumps out at me is this appointment wouldn't even need Senate confirmation. Oh. What? It's a direct line to the president, which means a lot of influence, you know, over all those national security decisions. And Waltz's background? I mean, he's not your average congressman. He could really shake things up. Right. This is a retired Green Beret we're talking about. Yeah. The first one to ever serve in Congress. Exactly. And and his service record is nothing to sneeze at Afghanistan then, the Middle East Africa. Yeah. You know, we're talking about places with some serious high stakes situations. Hey, hey, before we keep going, remember to subscribe uh, to stay informed. OK, so we've got the military background. But then on top of that, he's also advised people like Donald Rumsfeld and uh, Robert Gates when they were defense secretaries. Oh, yeah, that's right. So this isn't Waltz's first time dealing with national security policy. Exactly. He's been in the room where it happens, you know, and that really shapes your perspective. Yeah, for sure. And then you add in the fact that he's a Republican congressman from Florida, often called a China hawk, someone who wants to take a very strong stance against China. Yeah. And that stance on China is a good example of how his personal views might actually become, you know, policy actions. He's even called for boycotting the 2022 Beijing Olympics. Wow. Which kind of tells you something about his willingness to be firm. Yeah, that's a pretty confrontational approach, and it makes you wonder how he would handle those really complex U.S.-China relations. Yeah. Especially in areas like trade and military strategy. It's a tough one, and it's not just China. Wallace is also a big advocate for legal immigration and border security, but he's been pretty vocal about how we handled our Afghan allies after the withdrawal. Right. So what does that mean for his approach to, say, the Ukraine-Russia war? That's the question, isn't it? How is he going to balance border security concerns with, you know, helping those who helped us in conflict zones? It's a tough balance. There are some definite parallels with Ukraine and the support we're giving them. Yeah, definitely a lot to unpack there. Yeah, it's a tough balance for sure. And, you know, it makes you think about how Waltz might do things differently than other national security advisors. Someone like H.R. McMaster, who also worked under Trump, yeah. you know, he tried to push for a more moderate approach. Right. That's a good point. Thinking back to McMaster or even John Bolton, who also had a stint as Trump's national security advisor, really shows the challenges that Waltz might run into. Yeah. Both Bolton and McMaster had those very public disagreements with Trump. Yeah. And ultimately left because of them. Exactly. And that brings up the question of, you know, how Waltz is going to handle that potential tension. Can he give honest advice while still keeping things good with a president who's known to make some, you know, impulsive decisions? That's a big one. And how will all of this play out in the current global situation? We're talking about a lot of global uncertainty, the Ukraine-Russia war, the Israel-Hamas conflict. These aren't easy situations to just walk into. Yeah, they're not simple at all. These situations need careful thought, strategic planning, you know, understanding what could happen with every move you make. And you got to remember, Waltz will be working within a specific political context, too. Oh, definitely. We can't forget about the domestic politics. If Waltz leaves his seat in the House. Right. It could make that already slim Republican majority even smaller. Right. How will that affect his ability to, you know, make moves and influence policy? That's a big question. And then beyond that, there's also how he'll work with other people in the administration. Yeah. Building those strong relationships with the secretary of state, the secretary of defense. Right. Yeah. Those are crucial for any national security advisor to be effective. It's all about making those alliances, finding some common ground, you know, navigating those competing interests. It's like a whole other battlefield just happening in those halls of power. Exactly. And then there's the international stage. How is Walt's going to work with foreign leaders? Yeah. Showing strength, but keeping those diplomatic channels open? That's a tough balance. Especially with Trump's way of handling foreign policy, which has often been called unpredictable and transactional. Yeah. How will Waltz deal with that? Can he give good advice mm. and still stay loyal to the president's style? It's a fascinating question and one that we'll probably see play out over time, but it really shows how important this position is. The decisions the National Security Advisor makes can affect the whole world. You know, things like war and peace trade agreements, global partnerships. 
It's a high stakes role. Yeah, it really is a high stakes role. And it makes you think about the weight on Waltz's shoulders, you know, the decisions he's going to be a part of. And I just keep coming back to that military experience. Right. You can't really separate that from how he might approach this job. I mean, all those years as a Green Beret operating in tough places, working with the local people, understanding those complexities of conflict you know, on the ground, that changes how you see the world. Absolutely. It's a whole different perspective than someone who's always been in Washington, mm -hmm. you know, working within the political system. Right. Waltz has seen firsthand what conflict costs, mm. you know, in terms of human life. Right. He understands the nuances, the ripple effects, those yeah. unintended consequences. And that understanding could be really important, especially with everything going on in the world right now. If you think about Ukraine, the Middle East. Those aren't just issues on a piece of paper. Yeah. We're talking about real people, real lives that are affected by the decisions being made at the top. It's that human element that sometimes gets lost, you know, in all the talk about strategy and policy. Mm. But Waltz's background, his experience out in the field, could bring that human element back. It could. And it makes you wonder, can he bridge that gap, you know, between his military experience and the political realities of this position? Right. Can he bring that human-centric perspective to those tough decisions he's going to face? Those are the questions we'll be watching. Hmm. You know, as things develop, he's stepping into a role that could really impact the world. And there are no guarantees. But it's safe to say Waltz brings something different to the table. Right. A perspective that could shake things up. It's a fascinating story for sure, and one we'll be following closely. It really shows how our backgrounds, experiences, and what we believe can shape history, especially when it comes to powerful positions like this. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Mike Waltz and what he could do as National Security Advisor, we have a lot to think about how will his military experience shape his choices? Can he handle the political pressures and potential conflicts? And in the end, what impact will he have on the world stage? Mm. Only time will tell. But it's going to be interesting to watch it all unfold. It will be. If you're enjoying these podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Thanks once again, and we'll see you soon.